The Becker External Drainage and Monitoring System from Medtronic provides the physician with a complete closed system for draining cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, while monitoring pressure and flow rate from the lateral ventricles of the brain or the lumbar subarachnoid space. System Setup The system should be prepared under sterile conditions prior to placement of the ventricular or lumbar catheter. Secure the Becker pole clamp to a standard IV pole. Using the black knob, tighten the threaded bolt to engage the pole. Slide the Becker into the slot on the IV pole clamp. Alternatively, the Becker may be hung on an IV pole using the cord with cord lock. Use this method when using the clear sight laser level. External pressure transducers and transducer adapters may be used to connect the Becker system to pressure monitoring equipment. To attach a pressure transducer, remove the red end cap from the main system stopcock and follow instructions supplied by the transducer manufacturer. Patient line stopcock positions. Stopcocks are used to direct the flow of fluid within the Becker external drainage and monitoring system. The stopcock knob is marked with three arrows, as well as an arm marked with the word off. The arrows indicate the direction which fluid can flow, while the off arm indicates where the fluid cannot flow. For example, in this diagram, the off position is rotated away from all of the lines. This allows fluid from the patient's catheter to flow to both the main system stopcock and the sampling site or the transducer adapter. If the off position is rotated toward the sampling site or transducer adapter, fluid from the patient's catheter would flow through the patient tubing past the stopcock. If the off position is rotated towards the patient catheter position, fluid from the patient's catheter would stop flowing through the patient line to the drip chamber. However, fluid introduced into the sampling site would still move through the tubing to the drip chamber. This might be done to flush an obstruction in the patient line towards the drip chamber. With a stopcock in this position, no fluid from the sampling site will communicate with the patient. Finally, if the off position is rotated off to the main system stopcock, fluid can flow either from the patient's catheter to the sampling site or from the sampling site towards the patient's catheter. Main System Stopcock Positions The main system stopcock controls flow from the patient line stopcock to the transducer adapter or dead end plug and into the drip chamber. Like the patient line stopcock, the main system stopcock is marked with three arrows as well as an arm marked with the word off. The arrows indicate the directions which fluid can flow, while the off arm indicates where the fluid cannot flow. For example, when the off position is rotated away from all of the lines, the fluid from the patient line stopcock is allowed to flow to both the transducer adapter or dead end plug and the drip chamber. If the off position is rotated toward the transducer site or dead end plug, fluid from the patient line will flow to the drip chamber only. If the off position is rotated toward the patient line stopcock, fluid flow from the patient line would stop, inhibiting flow to either the transducer site or to the drip chamber. Finally, if the off position is rotated toward the drip chamber position, fluid from the patient line stopcock flows to the transducer adapter but is inhibited from flowing to the drip chamber. Priming the system. Prime the system with sterile isotonic saline solution prior to connecting to the patient in order to clear air bubbles from the line. Priming the patient line. Begin by rotating the patient line stopcock handle inscribed with the off indicator toward the main system stopcock. In this position, saline will flow from the patient line sampling site to the short section of patient line tubing only. Using sterile technique, Fill a 30 cc syringe with sterile isotonic saline solution. Access the patient line stopcock sampling site and loosen or remove the red end cap on the proximal end of the patient line. Fill the patient line towards the short section of tubing that connects to the ventricular catheter.
Ensure the line is fully primed and all air bubbles are removed. Replace or retighten the end cap on the patient line. Rotate the patient line stopcock 180 degrees so that it is pointing towards the portion of tubing which connects to a patient's catheter, allowing fluid to be pushed from the sampling site in the direction of the drip chamber. Prime the patient line all the way through to the drip chamber. Ensure all air bubbles are eliminated from the patient line. Priming the external pressure transducer. If using an external pressure transducer, it will need to be primed as well. Make sure the patient line stopcock is positioned as shown so that fluid can be pushed from the sampling site in the direction of the drip chamber. Rotate the main system stopcock so that it is off to the drip chamber, allowing fluid to be pushed to the external pressure transducer. Using sterile technique, loosen or remove the end cap on the transducer. With the syringe still connected to the patient line stopcock, push the sterile saline solution through the inner tubing of the transducer and ensure that all air bubbles have been removed. Replace the end cap on the transducer and bleed air from the transducer if necessary according to the manufacturer's instructions. Once the patient line has been completely primed, ensure that the patient line stopcock is left in a position where it is off to the portion of the tubing that connects to the patient's catheter. This technique will keep the priming fluid trapped in the patient line. Empty the priming fluid from the drip chamber into the drainage bag. It may be necessary to manipulate the drainage bag connection line or drainage bag one-way valve to establish drainage. Once complete, shut off the flow of fluid from between the drip chamber and the drainage collection bag by sliding the clamps over the tubing pinching off flow or rotate the stopcock below the drip chamber if included. Leveling the Becker system. If supplied, the clear sight laser level can be used to level the drainage system to the patient's head. When using the clear sight laser, the laser pole clamp method of rigidly mounting the Becker to the IV pole cannot be used. Instead, the Becker must be hung on the IV pole using the cord with cord lock. Clip the clear sight laser level onto the bracket on the back of the Becker system. Raise or lower the Becker system by squeezing the black cord lock and lengthening or shortening the cord so that the clear sight laser level is roughly in line with the patient's head. Turn on the laser by pressing and releasing the black power button. A green LED indicates the laser is turned on. Take caution to avoid shining the laser light into the patient's eyes. Using the yellow bubble levels on the top and bottom of the laser, Adjust the alignment by rotating the laser level until the bubbles rest evenly between the parallel lines. Finally, raise or lower the Becker system until the laser points to the correct landmark on the patient's body. Ensure that the yellow bubble levels are still horizontally aligned. Setting the pressure threshold. Raise or lower the drip chamber to the pressure setting prescribed by the physician. Make sure the prescribed pressure number is aligned to the double arrow on top of the drip chamber. Tighten the drip chamber locking thumb screw. Once the system has been completely set up and connected to the patient, the stopcocks can be opened to allow drainage of CSF. The main system stopcock and patient line stopcock should be set as shown to allow fluid drainage from the patient into the drip chamber. Zeroing the pressure transducer to atmospheric pressure. Before zeroing the transducer to atmospheric pressure, it is important that two conditions be met. One, the drainage system should be level with the patient. Two, the tubing between the transducer and the top of the drip chamber must be completely filled with fluid. Start by rotating the knob on the main system stopcock so that it is turned off to fluid coming from the patient. Lower the drip chamber so that the arrows on the drip chamber line up with the zero reference point on the system panel. Zero the transducer and monitor according to the manufacturer's instructions. Once the pressure transducer has been zeroed, adjust the drip chamber back to the prescribed setting. Finally, 
adjust the main system stopcock so that it is turned off to the transducer, thus allowing fluid flow from the patient into the drip chamber. Connecting the ventricular catheter to the Becker system. To connect a ventricular catheter to the Becker system, make sure that the patient line stopcock is rotated off to the patient. It should already be in this position as a result of the priming process. Remove the catheter cap and attach the catheter to the Becker patient line, being careful to avoid making air bubbles. Care should be taken to allow only a minimal amount of CSF to escape. Ensure that the drip chamber is set to the pressure level as prescribed by the physician and is locked into its position by tightening the thumb screw. Draining CSF To drain CSF, position both the main system and the patient line stopcocks as shown. Monitoring pressure with the transducer to monitor ICP, position patient line and main line stopcocks as shown, so that the fluid flows only to the transducer adapter. Position stopcocks to monitor or drain, never to both. Simultaneous drainage and pressure monitoring may result in artifacts in measured pressure. Monitoring CSF flow. Set patient line and main line stopcocks to allow CSF to flow to the drip chamber. Slide the drip chamber up, aligning the drip chamber arrow with the desired pressure setting. Monitor the flow rate of CSF by closing the slide clamp as close as possible to the drip chamber or rotate the stopcock below the drip chamber if included. Measure fluid accumulation in the chamber for the prescribed period of time. Never allow the drip chamber to overfill. Sampling CSF CSF can be sampled from either the patient line sampling site or the drainage line sampling site. When sampling CSF from the patient line sampling site, position the patient line stopcock as shown. Clean the sampling site with isopropyl alcohol. Allow it to air dry, usually 30 to 60 seconds. If using a system equipped with interlink needleless sampling sites, access the site using a needle adapter or a 25-gauge needle. If using a system equipped with the smart side needleless sampling sites, thread the syringe on directly to the site. Do not use a sharp needle as this can damage the sampling site. When sampling CSF from the drainage line sampling site, close this line clamp distal to the sampling site. Sample CSF using the same method recommended for the patient line sampling site. Becker System Hydrophobic Filter The Becker system is equipped with a hydrophobic filter at the top of the drip chamber, which is designed not to clog if it comes in contact with fluid. Emptying the drip chamber to empty the drip chamber, set the main system stopcock so the patient line does not communicate with either the transducer adapter or the drip chamber. Then, open drainage line slide clamps or the stopcock below the drip chamber. When the drip chamber is emptied, reset the main system stopcock and slide clamps or stopcock below the drip chamber to the desired positions. Removing and replacing the drainage bag. To remove the drainage bag, close the drainage line slide clamps or the stopcock below the drip chamber, preventing fluid from escaping while the bag is disconnected. Next, clean all contact surfaces with isopropyl alcohol. Unhook the drainage bag from the clear plastic tabs which secure the drainage bag to the system mounting panel. Then, to disconnect the drainage bag from the drainage bag connection line, Grasp the tubing above the drainage bag connection with thumb and forefinger and rotate the bag 90 degrees to the left or clockwise and pull down. To replace the drainage bag, begin by cleaning all contact surfaces with isopropyl alcohol and allow to air dry, usually 30 to 60 seconds. Then, with the drainage bag rotated 90 degrees, insert the drainage bag connector into the lure lock fitting and rotate the bag 90 degrees to the right or counterclockwise. Be sure to finger tighten only, 
and do not use instrumentation to connect or disconnect the drainage bag.